Hello everybody and welcome to another detailed gun review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Browning Buckmark rifle. Now I may refer to this as the Buckmark carbine in this video. I have a shortened version here with a 13 inch barrel. Um, carbine is certainly the term I would use to describe it. I have seen these sold as the Buckmark rifle and carbine but I believe officially it is the Buckmark rifle. The Browning Buckmark in its original handgun form has been on sale since 1985 and has a really good reputation in the States of being a robust and accurate 22 handgun for plinking and target shooting. And it's really nice that at some point they started making a rifle version which is perfectly UK legal. So just in case anyone isn't aware, in terms of UK uh, regulations for, for Section 1 firearms that fire uh, self-contained cartridges, so most guns, uh, they have to be over 300 millimeters in terms of barrel length and 600 millimeters overall, which is about 24 inches. So while this means that handguns look absolutely ridiculous, such as this 18-inch uh, Colt Single Action Army made by Uberti, it does mean that we can have some rather short rifles. So this particular one, I shortened the barrel down to about 13 inches. I could have gone just below 12 inches. However, it was actually my first barrel threading job. So I thought I'd better give it the extra just in case anything went wrong and I had to rectify it. So yeah, this particular gun has a 13 inch barrel, which gives it an overall length of 28 and a half inches or about 72 centimeters so well within the legal limit and like I said the barrel length is about 13 inches. Now while we're on the subject of barrel length I've seen a lot of these advertised as having an 18 inch barrel and on Wikipedia which I know isn't exactly a reliable source on Wikipedia it says all Browning Buckmark rifles have an 18 inch barrel well I can tell you for a fact that this particular example when I bought it actually had a 20 inch barrel if we put that on the end there, that's the off cut. As you can see quite clearly, hopefully, this one definitely had a 20 inch barrel out of the box. Uh, perhaps it's just a European version or something. Uh, maybe other models do come with an 18 inch barrel, but this particular one had a 20 inch barrel, which sounds quite long. However, you do have to remember that with a handgun uh, derived rifle like this, the magazine goes in the grip and the barrel can start here, whereas on a, say, a Ruger 1022, you've got the grip, the trigger, then the magazine, and then the barrel would start. So even with a 20 inch barrel uh, out of the box, it still feels like a very compact and lightweight carbine. Speaking of weight, the gun with the shortened barrel and a small red dot sight weigh just over two kilograms, which is about four pounds and eight ounces for Americans. Speaking of Americans, it's kind of funny that in America this would be classed as a short-barreled rifle and you'd have to get your $200 tax stamp on it. Like I mentioned before, in the UK, uh, you're, it's essentially a 12-inch barrel, 24-inch overall length. So we can have some fairly short rifles, uh, or alternatively, you could have a very long and silly-looking handgun. I personally like guns like this. I feel like with our limitations in terms of the law, a gun like this with a stock and a short barrel is a lot more practical than something like this with its supremely long barrel. The other alternative, of course, being a 12 inch barrel and an extension rod on the back. But having a stock is a huge advantage. Having the handling characteristics of a rifle uh, while being as compact as a large handgun, I think is a good combination. And I in fact, it's a real shame that nobody makes, uh, say like a set of grips of this that have a stock on them or even just a dedicated revolver rifle. There are a couple about, but they're pretty rare. And uh, it's a real shame because with semi-autos, we are limited to 22 calibre, whereas with revolvers, we can have them in any calibre we like. So this particular um, Uberti Cattleman is a 44 Magnum. Uh, so something like this with a shoulder stock, I think would be great. Certainly more practical in this form than in long barrel form. Talking about long barrel uh, pistols and revolvers, it's become quite common practice with these because they are imported as a legal gun and the handgun version you are not able to convert into a longer gun. You can make a section one gun shorter um, or convert it um, into a long barrel pistol, but you can't take a section five conventional handgun and extend it. It doesn't work the other way around. However, if you start with one of these as a base gun, you can chop the stock off and put a rod on if you like, um, like on my Taurus here. 
and it'll keep it as a section one legal gun. It will become a long barrel pistol. And for people that do sort of, you know, action pistol shooting and stuff, uh, that's been quite a popular option. However, this is quite heavy. I think, I don't think it's the ideal base to make a long barrel pistol out of. Uh, but it does make a different, a, a nice sort of unique choice. And there are lots of aftermarket bits around for these, especially in the States, of course. So these guns aren't all that cheap, and that's something I actually quite like about them. They are a real quality 22 uh, rifle or tan gun hybrid thing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So there are guns like the got something stuck on it. So there are guns like the Ruger 1022 that are very, uh, very popular, and they are good guns. They are pretty accurate, and there are so many accessories out there. They make a great choice for like a first 22 or for a nice custom job. However, in terms of real quality. Um, and uh, refinement, I just, I've never been all that impressed with them. You can certainly build some great guns out of them. But, oh, there it is, back again. Get off. All right. But in terms of, uh, yeah, more refined, uh, what I would consider a more high-quality product that kind of feels a little bit special, I really like these. Uh, however, it is reflected in the price. So this one was actually a used example, a lightly used example, not much wear on it. And I paid £550, which is more than most people would pay for a brand new 1022 or equivalent. So they're quite expensive. There are some cheaper options on Gun Trader. I just had a look. When I bought this, there weren't all that many available. So I just found a local gun shop that had one of these. 550 for this was quite a lot. However, I've been very happy with it. And certainly after I did the barrel chop, uh, this is one of my favourite guns. It is such a sweet handling little thing. So let's have a quick look at a few of the features on this that, of course, differentiate it from the handgun version. Now, the barrel is actually different. The way it interfaces, it does, I believe, come out the same way. Um, so you have to take the fore end off, which is very easy with a single screw. Then there's an Allen key in, an Allen uh, he headed screw in here that you have to undo. And then the barrel kind of slides off once you've taken the top rail off. So it comes off in a, basically the same way as with the handgun. However, it it does not attach the same way. So they obviously did this so that if you had the two guns, you couldn't just swap the barrels in between them. Um, so maybe that, that's frustrating if you wanted to do that. Just keep that in mind. The barrel uh, interface with the receiver uh, with the frame is different between the rifle and the handgun. Of course, we have this stock attached on the back. It's been done in, I think, quite a tasteful way. I think overall, the look of the gun is still quite sleek and nice. Originally, I wasn't sure about these holes. It almost reminded me of the uh, the gyrojet or something like that. Something kind of space agey from the from the sixties. Uh, but it's really grown on me, and it is very comfortable. So you might be worried that a kind of a hybrid design like this, that's been designed as a handgun, would not work as a rifle. However, it really works quite well. Like I showed you earlier, the the gun is very lightweight. I like that all the controls are basically in reach. I'll go into that. A little bit more later because there are there are some um, caveats to this whole system in terms of uh, how you can operate it there are some drawbacks to it it's the right word uh, but overall I just love the way the gun feels it's actually possible to hold it like that like a handgun if you wanted I can kind of see why people might want to convert this into a pistol but overall it is remarkably comfortable you've got a proper stock a good sort of cheek bulge there so you can get a good good look down the top rail and this isn't some half-hearted job where you've got a silly little stock that doesn't quite work right it really does feel like a purpose-built rifle and it's very solid as well in case you're wondering about the the strength of this it's very solid it's made of aluminium the frame it's anodized aluminium and it's very robust good finish on it uh, not much wear on it even though i've shot this one quite a bit and as you can see, it's got really, really lovely wood, especially the fore end here. Really well figured, nice looking wood with a kind of a satin oil finish rather than like a lacquer. I think it's just really gorgeous. So let's have a little discussion about the advantages and disadvantages of a pistol based system like this. I've already mentioned a few of them. The handling characteristics are just great. This is an incredibly comfortable little gun. I really like that the magazine goes right where your hand is. I find it really easy to do quick sort of intuitive uh, reloads with it. Uh, I like that the barrel can be 
the length it needs to be uh, without increasing the overall length. So like I said before, the magazine is not in front of the trigger guard, it's behind it. So the handgun layout does give you an overall shorter length. I like the very lightweight of the whole thing. Uh, however, there are some disadvantages, so let's talk about a few of those. First and foremost, the fact that you have a reciprocating slide right here by your face. So that's really the problem with any pistol-based carbine. You've got moving parts very close to you. They obviously uh, don't want anyone to get injured by this, and they've put a little red dot here. So you effectively have to keep your face away from where that red dot is, because if it's anywhere near that red dot, there is a chance you might get smacked in the nose with it. I've shot this quite a lot. My natural shooting position puts my head a safe distance away from the reciprocating mass. However, I found that when I was shooting from a bench, like bench rest kind of uh, leaning forward with it on a sandbag, you do have a tendency to kind of creep forward when you're kind of hunched over a gun like this. So you do have to be conscious about the moving parts. Certainly when I've introduced new shooters or people who haven't shot this gun before, uh, it's been the first thing I've told them. Keep your face away. You don't have to adopt an unnatural shooting position. It, it's not that bad. Just something you really need to be aware of. What I actually think is a bigger issue than the movement of the slide itself is that because you've got this big ejection port open on both sides, you've got all this space here, you actually get quite a lot of debris come out of the gun. And this is something I noticed the first time I shot it. It's definitely worse with more powerful ammunition. I was shooting some Ely action or something like that with the black case. It's quite powerful. Similar to Mini Mag, uh, but it's not the cleanest shooting stuff. And I found holding the gun like this, I would get spray from the ejection port on my wrist and I would get spray out the back on my face. And it was quite uncomfortable. I had to um, kind of adjust the way I was holding it. Now, luckily, with cleaner burning ammunition, it's not so much of a problem. I mostly shoot CCI Mini Mag in it, and it's much cleaner, and it really isn't much of a problem. But it certainly is a just something you have to accept about the design, that everything is exposed and your face is very close to the moving parts. So um, definitely wear shooting glasses. Obviously, you should be doing that anyway, but definitely wear uh, eye protection when shooting this. You've got bits moving. You've got combustion gases around. You want to make sure you're safe. Uh, on, the, on a similar note, I've actually found that the red dot sight, which I positioned right above the chamber here, which maybe I shouldn't have, does actually get get quite dirty. Again, it gets kind of blasted, so you end up having to kind of wipe the, the red dot sight every now and then. Now, the only other real disadvantage I can think of is that the controls, while some of them are nice and easy to reach, so the safety, which is quite stiff, you can see I have to actually adjust my grip a little bit to push it up, but to disengage it uh, is very easy. Certainly, I, I don't have very big hands, but yeah, safety is fine. It's not on both sides. It's only set up for the right-handed shooter, but safety is nice and easy. So you can see, don't have to break my grip. However, the slide release, I am nowhere near, and the magazine release, I'm nowhere near. So unlike a normal handgun, where say your hand is sort of here and you can swivel it around, this does not allow for that kind of adjustment to reach the controls. When your hand is locked in here, You've got your stock uh, rubbing up against your wrist and you simply have no adjustment to get around there. So typically I will bring my support hand off the fore end and I will manipulate the controls that way. So let's say I've run dry. Uh, let's grab another magazine. I've got a few magazines. They cost about £40 in the UK. They're not all that easy to come by. Luckily I managed to pick up a few spares. Right, so let's say I've just run dry. I will bring my support hand back. Check the mag, new one, and bring it back into action like that. So yeah, one-handed operation uh, would be tricky, to say the least, unless you were to chop the stock off and turn it into a long barrel pistol. Just one of the things you've got to be aware of when you're going from a, uh, a handgun to a rifle platform. There are some hangovers of the pistol design that just don't work all that well. Now, something you may have noticed there, which is a really cool feature on this, is it actually has real magazine ejection. Have a look at this. Get my hand out of the way. There's actually a spring-loaded plug in the magazine well. Of course, it means there's a little bit more effort to get them in. Not much, but like that. But it actually shoots the magazines out. Pretty much whatever angle the gun is at, it will actually eject the mag quite far. Maybe not all the way clean if it's upside down, but certainly at a normal shooting angle, it'll eject the mag completely clear of the gun. I think that's really cool. And certainly um, makes up for the fact that 
uh, 22 caliber single stack magazines, 10 round mag, by the way. They aren't the easiest thing to locate in the mag wells because they're quite skinny and they've got that button sticking out. There's no beveling or anything. So perhaps the fact that it chucks the first one clear will give you a little advantage um, and speed up the whole process. I've got fairly good at it now. The fact that you are putting the magazine right into where your other hand is, I think definitely helps. Let's try and do one. There, it's fairly fast. Uh, so talking about materials like I was before, we've got really, really nice wood on it. Very good quality wood. I really like it. The grip panels, I don't think are attached all that well. I, I don't know. There, there's only one screw on each side. I wish there were two. Sometimes I felt a little bit of flex. If I can get a good look in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see. But right here, you can see that the wood isn't completely up against the metal. Because, uh, yeah, they're very thin grips and they're only held on in one place. And you've got quite a substantial spring underneath this side for the magazine release. Uh, the magazine release is not reversible. This is not a very adjustable gun if you're a left-handed shooter. Um, might not work for you. Uh, so you've got, yeah, nice wood, aluminium frame, steel barrel, of course, steel reciprocating uh, slide. You can see some of the internals there. You've got a little thing sticking out, which is the ejector. There's your extractor, so it does extract to the right. Um, I believe this is an aluminium rail on the top, and this is actually how you disassemble the gun. So that is another... Uh, this isn't unique to the rifle, but this is an, a disadvantage of the buckmark system in general. To disassemble, you do have to remove these bolts, and it's possible if you have a scope up here that's set up very well that you could lose zero. I haven't really seen a huge change in zero with a red dot. But again, if you're doing kind of longer range shooting and you've got a very precisely mounted scope, it's a bit of a pain that you have to actually remove everything, especially if your scope rings are here and here, and you would actually have to remove your scope to then remove the rail. Definitely one of the main drawbacks of this design. Uh, it's a real shame there's not an easier way of taking it apart. Luckily, the ejection port is very big, so you can clean most of the key areas from here, but I'm quite OCD with my cleaning and I really like to take the whole thing apart. So, uh, this is one of my 22s that I don't really clean as much as the other ones because it's a bit of a pain to get right in there. Um, got a few markings on the barrel, browning arms. Very good quality, as you'd expect from browning the whole thing. Uh, it's not like a high polished finish or anything, which would be quite nice, but it's just kind of a dull, almost park rise kind of matte blue. But overall, everything is just cut and machined really nicely. Really good quality gun overall. Now, up top, I've got a little uh, Hawk micro red dot. Um, there are so many choices for red dots these days. I, I didn't really know what to go for. I ended up buying this one because it's one of the smallest and lightest weight ones available that has the mount kind of with it built in. I know that Shield makes some really tiny ones. Um, I don't like the look of those for some reason. They're all kind of cut away, skeletonized. I like the look of this. You've got a very easy up down brightness adjustment on the side. Um, it's got an aluminium uh, chassis, but with little helicoil thread inserts so you don't strip the threads. It's a really nicely built little site. It is a Chinese one. Um, I think you can get them for about £150 or so. So a little bit cheaper than the Vortex ones. Uh, I've been very happy with it. The only thing is, halfway through the adjustment, it drops quite significantly. As you can see there, I've just gone down a brightness level and it's pretty much disappeared. So it goes from really bright to... That's my normal setting there. Let's see if I can focus on the dot. Don't think it'll let me. Anyway, the dot's smaller. Uh, in reality, it looks pretty big on screen. But anyway, it's a pretty nice red dot sight, and it really suits a gun like this well. Now, out of the box, it came with some Williams Firesight style fiber optics. The back is fully adjustable. However, on this particular example, I should have got some pictures I could put in here before I did the whole uh, modification. It was kind of at an angle. I don't know whether the fire sight had been installed or the rear sight had been installed wrong or someone had taken it off and put it on wrong, but it was kind of canted and it just, it was really ugly. I don't like the, the rear sight on this anyway, so really optics are the way to go. Uh, as for the front sight, the front sight is actually very nice. It's a very good quality um, screw in front sight, so it went in here. I've actually currently got it mounted on my uh, Kiapa little badger. So that's what the front sight originally looked like. Nice high visibility. Hopefully you can see that. High visibility uh, steel front sight, really nice front sight. So I kept it and put it on, put it on this gun. So have a look at my review on this if you want to see the little badger. 
So in terms of modifications, all I've done to this is chop the barrel down to 13 inches. Like I said before, it was actually the first time I'd ever done this. So it was kind of a little bit of guesswork and I wanted to leave the extra length on there rather than go straight to the legal limit just in case I did anything wrong. I actually ended up using a, a thread grinder to grind the threads. I've done this one uh, half inch 28. As you can see, it's quite a nice clean job. And right, uh, a second ago, I had a little threaded muzzle cap. However, I've got a few different things to put on there. So I, there's a little muzzle brake that I bought. This is actually just a cheap one I got off Wish to see if it was any good. It's actually very nicely machined. Um, and let me get that on for you. There we go. So that looks kind of cool. However, ultimately, uh, I, there's not much point in chopping the barrel down to only extend it back three inches with a with a muzzle brake, which of course is unnecessary for a 22 anyway. Uh, it looks pretty cool though. And of course for the rear, I didn't like there being an empty dovetail. So I've put a little dovetail blank filler in there. And I think the overall, the look is nice and clean. Now, what I was really going for when I did the barrel chop and kind of the, the biggest reason for it, similar with my uh, little badger, is I wanted to reduce the barrel so I could then put a moderator on it or a silencer and it would still be the same length or shorter than it was originally. So the silencer that I chose for this particular gun is a Wildcat Panther 22. Now this is quite a beefy, it's quite a heavy, uh, well-built moderator. It does have interchangeable um, baffles and threaded inserts, so you can kind of change it between different calibers and uh, threads. It's a really nice uh, moderator. They cost about £150. I highly recommend it. Really good performing moderator. So I cut the barrel so that this would fit on nicely. Oh, and it's an over barrel moderator as well, which means the first few inches, uh, the barrel sits inside and then it screws down, giving you a shorter overall length. And this just fits really, really well, almost up against the handguard. I'll just show you like that. I think you'll agree, it's a pretty cool overall package. Very fast shooting, got a pretty good trigger on it. Not amazing, but it's fairly good. I don't obviously like dry firing uh, 22s, but I'll just do one for you. Yeah, pretty light, very light trigger. It's not, hasn't got the best feel to it. There isn't a very um, well-defined break point, but it is light, so you can shoot this thing fairly fast. And it is gold washed um, from the factory. Just a nice little browning touch. I think it looks really good. But yeah, overall, what a cool little package. And it will cycle very nicely on lower velocity ammo. So I was talking earlier about Minimag. However, uh, using subsonic CCI, such as CCI standard and the CCI subsonic hollow points, uh, which are fairly cheap for a pack of 100, and they're quite reasonable, cycles really nicely. Uh, so when, when I use it without the moderator, I use the mini mags and with the moderator, I use the subsonic hollow points or CCI standard. You can feel that it's a little bit more sluggish with its cycling. However, I haven't had any reliability issues with lower powered ammunition. Of course, if you go very low down the, the velocity scale to like the CCI quiet, it won't work. But overall, this is very tolerant to different types of ammunition. There's no worries with regular over a thousand feet per second or around a feet per second, a uh, thousand feet per second. Uh, subsonic stuff will be absolutely fine. You shouldn't run into any problems there. Now, as I often mention, um, and I know some people are disappointed that I don't have a whole lot to tell them or show them, I only shoot uh, short range, so 25 meters at my target range, and the gun's more accurate than me at that kind of range. So I really can't comment that much on accuracy other than that this is probably one of the more, ac this is one of the most accurate 22s that I've shot. I certainly shoot it better than a lot of my other guns. And with the limitations of me as a shooter and with the red dot sight, uh, you can't really, I can't really give you any more information than that. It shoots very well. At 25 meters, if I do my part, all the shots are going to be touching each other. Um, chopping the barrel down doesn't seem to affect accuracy that much. I did the job carefully and well. I recrowned it. And it, it shoots great. But certainly in stock form, 20-inch barrel, this is a very accurate 22 if you do your part. Now, something I would like to show you just in case anyone is interested in perhaps using the gun like this, um, is if I remove my moderator and I remove my handguard, 
which as I said earlier is just a single screw. Um, I thought I'd show you the gun is actually very usable. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a lightweight mode if you like. Taking everything off it including the handguard and just having it like a long barrel pistol but with a stock. This is actually a really nice usable package still. The barrel is very very heavy for a 22. They actually call this the, the sporter barrel, I think. Instead, it's not even listed as a target barrel. They actually make a ball barrel version. This is this does have a tapered barrel. However, it's still very thick, and it doesn't get too hot, so you can quite happily hold it like that. Or if you like, you can hold it more like a conventional handgun uh, with the stock. But it actually works really nicely like this. So sometimes when I go to the range, especially if I've if I'm taking quite a lot of gear, and this has a slightly smaller profile than when it has the moderator on it. Um, just makes for a really handy, sweet shooting little sort of 22 pistol carbine thing. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, it's kind of an interesting one because personally, this is a gun that I absolutely love. I think it's my favourite 22 um, out of all the ones I've owned. Um, I just, I just think it's so cool. It's so light and handy, and kind of slick, especially with a short barrel. I've Definitely recommend doing that because it makes it into a really cool little package. However, as like an all-round, all-purpose 22 caliber rifle, maybe for for vermin and stuff, um, there there might be better options. Like I said, there are quite a few limitations um, or or things you have to be aware of with it, like the the fact that the slide moves around. Um, so you've got to stay clear of that. The fact that you get the gases coming out of it and that the controls aren't easily operated. So for like for like a three gun, a uh, running gun kind of uh, speed shooting thing, this probably wouldn't work all that well unless you turn it into a pistol. Um, so th there probably are better choices as sort of an all round, as an all round gun, but there's just something about this thing that I absolutely love and I, I can't help but completely recommend it in terms of performance reliability accuracy and everything it's been absolutely stellar so no worries there i'd just say it's worth getting your hands on one of these and testing it out before you bought one maybe because i have a feeling that this setup with the controls might not work for everybody and actually when i first got it i kind of found it a little uncomfortable this little bit of wood here kind of rubbed me uh my wrist there so it's the kind of thing where uh, you kind of have to get used to it and adapt to using a slightly different handling uh, set of handling characteristics compared to a conventional rifle. But like I said, I absolutely love it. And in terms of actual performance, it is it is excellent. Uh, so I think that's everything. There are going to be lots more reviews coming soon. I know I always say that, but I'm, I'm stuck inside with the COVID-19 um, <laughs> isolation rules. So... Yeah, I'll be producing a lot more videos in the in the coming days. Thanks very much for watching and send me a message or leave a comment if you'd like to know anything more.